this week we're getting plastered on the Cumberland and Ohio Valley Railroad. Welcome back, everybody, and happy Independence Day. It is 4th of July. Uh, you may hear some uh, bangs in the background. The neighbors are shooting fireworks, so uh, just uh, excuse the uh, noise if you hear something in the background. Uh, you'll see that I actually didn't do really anything in this corner from the last vlog, but a lot of progress around on this other side. Um, First thing I did was go ahead and uh, enclose the tunnel and also extend the webbing uh, around the diorama. So this whole area here is ready for plaster cloth. And uh, in fact, I have started to do some plaster cloth in the little river area right here. Um, this actually has been a very uh, challenging project because finding a backdrop that would match up with this one and drop to such a low altitude right here um, was difficult. And in fact, it took three backdrops uh, blended together to make that happen. Um, the seam between this one in the corner and the new one is actually right behind this tree right here. Um, I'm actually going to pull it out and I'll show you where that seam is. Um, but the colors around it aren't that bad. So once you put a tree back here, um, it's really going to be pretty invisible. Um, of course, there'll be other gr greenery and shrubbery in that area that'll mask it even more. But, um, you know, you stand from this vantage point, uh, you definitely have a seamless background there. Um, and I'll show you a little something that, uh, that I came up with actually in the last day or two. And that is uh, trying to figure out a way to ease this abrupt cut along the horizon here. Um, what I had to do was make that a pretty drastic drop to match up with the other backdrops. And to do that, I had to cut the top off of a lot of trees. You know, it's really hard to, to actually cut individual tree tops, especially when they're as close up as these are. Um, there's just literally no way to do it. So, what I thought about trying is taking some little clusters of super trees, uh, which is the same thing here. It doesn't have any leaves on it. It's just the bare armature you get from Scenic Express. But these I've added some leaf uh, foliage to. And from a distance, and I'm talking two feet, um, it definitely softens that hard edge and what I'm trying to do is find leaves that sort of match the basic colors of uh, the, the backdrop colors. Now, in this area, there'll actually be full-size trees that probably starting around this point, they'll be tall enough to mask this edge. But as it goes over this road, um, I don't have the luxury of putting trees in the middle of the road, so I think having the trees in the foreground and then just this little small area kind of from here to here with these little clusters sticking up from the back um, will make that not quite as abrupt and uh, scalped looking across the top there. And the backdrop actually is mounted on a piece of foam board and that, that gives a little bit of a gap that I can put the stems back behind there. So it's only been up a couple of days. I'm still kind of living with it and deciding if I, I like the look of that or not. I think the more I add, the the better it'll look. But that's 
that's kind of where I'm where I'm at with that, and we'll we'll see on the next vlog if that's um, if that looks even better with uh, more foliage going up the hill. But the backdrop itself, of course, that's one. There's another one here that is going to match up very nicely with the one that's going to go forward. I just kind of stuck it up there to to see, but um, either a tree or a building or something uh, between those two endpoints that'll flow very nicely too. And then there's a third one, which is this uh, darker one that's back behind it. That one is actually mounted flat against the uh, backdrop board, but these other two have the uh, foam board behind them. Um, so this area um, has a road that's gonna go under the bridge and it comes across a little Rick's uh, highway bridge. I hadn't weathered it yet, but it is painted. And this roadway, I'm not sure if I'm going to stick with this or not. Um, I had just some extra sheets of Woodland Scenics um, foam roadbed. And I cut the road from that, so it's very uh, flexible. And uh, which makes it fit this contour very nicely. But uh, I'm going to see what I can do with it. Maybe a little bit of weathering um, will uh, make that where it's, uh, ex it's acceptable. Uh, I made this retaining wall here out of... Um, uh, Chooch makes some um, flexible wall sections. This is a concrete wall. And uh, cut that. Of course, it'll be filled in um, with some sculpt mold but cut that from, from a sheet of that concrete flexible wall material and I think it looks pretty good there. Um, so this is where the two uh, plate girder, de actually deck girder bridges go across this river. I've got them pulled out so I can work on it. Uh, I did add another tunnel. Um, unfortunately this one you can see where the tunnel liner ends and there's a reason for that because underneath here is the staging yard for Cumberland, Maryland and I have a camera that uh, that basically shows the uh, end of the yard to make sure that trains don't run run off the end of the track and to extend that liner any farther block the view of the camera. So it's one of those things that I kind of have to live with. Um, there was no good solution for it. Now, if I'm just standing here, it looks looks fine, but you can stand in this, you know, this position and you'll be able to see that it's it, it ends. However, um, I don't have a top on the uh, tunnel yet, so that'll make it a little bit darker. So maybe it won't be quite as obvious, but since these openings are in the fascia, it's always going to have a little bit of light in there. But, you know, it's one of those things that's just a necessary evil. But uh, at least the tunnel is in. And the idea with this, originally this was just going to be a river with maybe a little bit of white water with some rocks in the riverbed. But one of the, one of the uh, problems that was presented with the backdrop was... Uh, I, I couldn't get it low enough to be level with the water of the river. It was going to be way too high. So the solution I came up with was to actually build a rock wall and it's going to have water cascading over it um, through the rocks. I did a lot of um, Google searches for West Virginia uh, waterfalls and rapids and found some pretty good pictures that I actually kind of base this on. Um, this is a combination of uh, rock castings that I, I did myself, some of the Woodland Scenics Ready Rocks, and then um, some sculpt mold that I hand carved. Even actually has some rocks from the uh, from my garden railroad in the backyard here at the bottom. But uh, got it painted, did a little dry brushing highlight, with a very light gray white color and uh, I have to say I'm really pleased with how the rock work came out. Um, this is going to be uh, 
This is going to be a challenge to cut all of these little pieces of uh, silicone to have uh, all these little cascades down the rock. But if I can pull it off, I think it's going to be uh, in just look incredible. But again, if I can pull it off, we'll, we'll see. That will probably be a vlog unto itself when I actually start to, to lay this in. But it'll... It'll cascade down the side. It'll collect into the uh, riverbank, uh, riverbed here. And there will be some other rocks in the bed that'll, not really rapids per se, but it'll create a little white water. It'll give me a chance to model um, some water effects uh, as the water comes toward the uh, fascia here. But so far, between the backdrop and the rock work, I think it's shaping into a very nice scene. You'll notice I already got all of the piers painted and weathered. Um, so they're ready to go. Um, really what I'm waiting on right now is some, some more rock uh, molds and some just talus material to come in from Scenic Express so I can start to detail the river bank before I do anything much further to it. Um, the other thing I need to do, uh, and this was a challenge, was to come up with some sort of a pier, uh, very tall piers for these upper bridges. I think I mentioned to you before that this was supposed to be a trestle. And I was planning on having just a little like a plate girder bridge over the road, but the rest of this was going to be a wooden trestle with the lower bridges going through it. Well, what I found out was um, I created a mock-up of one of the bents and cut it out with a piece of foam board. And because of the very sharp angle, the way that the two bridges intersect one another, the bents were going to have to be at such a, a weird angle that the spacing between those and the ones on either side of it was just it was just going to be too extreme and I was just, the more I looked at it, I thought this is just going to look odd and um, I, it just was not looking like what I thought it would. I was very disappointed, but uh, I went back with my original plan, which was to use three different types of bridges. So these are built, um, they're not totally weathered, they've got a little initial uh little initial weathering on them, but I really haven't gone to town on them yet, but it'll have the the double um, plate girder bridge. This is one of the uh, Central Valley um, 200 foot truss bridges. Got the deck built and the the ties, but I'm, I'm now fixing to work on the actual uh, sides of it. And then over here are four um, deck girder bridges. Uh, they're Walters, and that'll make up the last part. So, um, the challenge here is to make the piers, because they're pretty tall, and there's nothing commercially available that will that will fit, fit the bill. So, I'm actually going to cut my own out of pink foam. Now, these that I've done here, and I've got two others, um, they're just rough cut with a uh, box cutter. Here's one of the uh, other ones here. Um, just to kind of, just to see how much space they took up. But I actually bought a Proxon hot wire table, really for the sole purpose of cutting out these, but I'm sure I'll, I'll find other purposes for it as well. But this is just basically just a rough mock-up. Um, the other one will be a little more three-dimensional with a pedestal that comes out a little bit from thicker foam. And then the top here will be a little bit wider than the actual middle part. Uh, but you get kind of the idea that they'll, they'll fit in here something like this. And there'll be space. There'll be three of them. So these two and then another one between these two bridges right here. And then I'll make the abutments the same way, something to match. Just got a couple of temporary pieces in there. And then uh, next time I film this, this wooden 
temporary wooden bridge, plywood bridge should be gone and the permanent bridges should be in. So just to kind of scoot back here, it's, 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 you know, looking pretty good. I think I'm, I'm happy with it. Uh, once, uh, really once you put the plaster cloth on and you start to see how the landforms actually take shape, uh, you really get a sense of what your, uh, what the finished product is going to look like. So I thought we'd do just a little quick demonstration on this vlog and I would show you, uh, the way that I actually do the plaster cloth. So let me get out some of the materials and, uh, we'll give it a shot. Okay. I think we'll start right here in this area where I left off. So the first thing I like to do is put down a piece of paper towel. And I mainly like this just because it keeps any plaster from dripping through onto the floor um, as we get the plaster cloth wet. So we'll put this right the, up against the webbing and then we're just gonna squirt it and get it nice and wet. And what this does is gets it to contour itself directly to the shape of the cardboard web. It's almost kind of magical here. It just takes takes that perfect shape. You can already see what it's going to look like. If you're not happy with it, one of the good things about doing the paper towel is now you have time to go in and make any adjustments if you're not happy with the way it looks. But uh, I am, so we'll just leave it just like it is. Um, the other thing with getting the towel wet is it prepares it for the plaster cloth because you don't want to put plaster cloth on top of anything dry because what's going to happen is it's going to just absorb the moisture out of the cloth and uh, that's uh, not going to have a good bond. So we want something that's wet underneath it. So uh, it takes the shape of the cardboard and it readies itself for the plaster cloth. All right, so let's get some of it cut and we'll uh, put it on next. So this is the plaster cloth I use. Uh, it comes from Scenic Express. Woodland Scenics also carries it. And for getting it wet, I just use a small paint tray. Put a little water in there. And there's no real secret to this. Uh, you just strictly take a piece. I've already cut this one to size. And the paint trays are just like an inch too narrow for this cloth, but I just stuff it in there. So basically I'll just drag it off to pull the water off and then we'll put it over on the layout. All right, so I got our cloth and we'll just come up against the edge there that I left off. Just pull it and I just kind of move it around with my fingers to start with and kind of brush out the edges. And yeah, I know there's a little gap right there. We're going to fill that in with sculpted mold. I, I don't like to try to put the plaster cloth right up against odd angle things like that and have a bunch of wrinkles. I prefer just a nice flat piece. Uh, so we'll we'll start with there and we'll fix that in just a second So now I've got a paintbrush and I've wetted it and I'm just going to start to brush out that cloth and basically Bring all of that plaster to the surface fill in all the weave of this cloth And you definitely want to brush out toward the outside edge or else you're going to just bunch the cloth all up because it doesn't stay put that well while it's at this state if you brush toward the center but that's pretty much all there is to it pretty simple and at this point if you see any little bulges that you're not crazy about one thing with wetting that paper towel you also wetted that cardboard so it's it's got some give to it at this point, so you can you can kind of manipulate that shape a little bit um, to get it exactly where you want it. All right, that looks pretty good. Let's see if we can add another piece and 
bring it around this corner a little bit. All right, here is our last piece we're gonna do. I'm gonna overlap it more just so I can be even with the edge of this paper towel. There we go. And then whenever I get ready to connect this next piece, I've got a little bit of paper towel sticking out there to re-wet. All right, let's uh, take our paintbrush to it. Cool beans. I love doing scenery. It's uh, only second to structures is my favorite thing about layout construction. But I will say this is this is where the to me the real artistry of the hobby comes in because you're you're really I mean you're definitely sculpting here maybe not in the traditional sense of the word like Michelangelo but you are you're definitely making making something appear out of nothing which is which is always pretty cool so there we go with our edge so. Let's see if we can address this uh, little gap right there and the, uh, the riverbank as well. As you can see, I've got a seam right here and that would be a big problem when you put any sort of resin in there because it will seep out if you have as much as a pinhole anywhere. It will find its way out. So we definitely want to cover that up with uh, something so it's got a leak proof bed to pour our resin. So let me mix up a little batch of sculpt mold and we'll tackle this uh, area. All right, I mixed me up a little sculpt mold here. Don't need a whole lot. And what I'm gonna do is just first sort of just glop a little of this to the side of the, of the opening here. I mix this pretty dry because I don't want it soupy because we're on a vertical surface here and I don't want it sliding off. All right, so once I have a good little clump there, I'm just gonna take my spoon and I'm gonna start working it into that crevice. Now this is, if I get a little on the surface of this, it's not the end of the world. I haven't even weathered it yet. So um, this is just a plaster base material. So I mean, I can, wash off any residue that gets on there, so that's not a problem. Another little gap in there. And then I'll just sort of smooth it with the edge of the spoon. Round it off. There we go. That filled that nicely come down below it and put just a little little bit right here working into that corner there we go like frosting a cake all right now what I like to do is use a smaller paintbrush than I did the first time get one out here I'm gonna wet it and then I'm just gonna kind of make a little bit smoother spread here I say if you make this pretty thick it's uh, very easy to work with And you can actually get pretty clean lines with it, like that right there. There we go. Now we got a nice filled, filled gap. Let's do a little something with this uh, riverbank and this gap here while we're at it. All right, so I'm gonna put a little bit down here. However, I've got to remember that I have a support here for this um, highway bridge, road bridge that goes across here. So I want to make sure I don't 
put this in the place where that needs to go is it pretty much I've already sized it to fit right in this little spot so but I also don't want to get stuff all over it so I'm gonna kind of spread it spread it in here I think I'll bring that out just a little that's a little sharp She'll smooth that out a little bit more. Let's see. I want it to go right in here. Lift you up a little bit. There we go. All right, so I've got this little spreader here. So the, over here we're okay. I just wanted to make sure. I wasn't going to raise this up too much. All right, let's put a little, little dab right in there. rest of this I'm going to do with the paintbrush. Let me get it wet again here. Alright. So you can kind of knock that off the edge there. It doesn't really stick to the plastic. And uh, you can also squirt it with water if it gets on something, and it'll just it'll just come right off. I tell you, sculpt mold is is absolutely my favorite uh, material to work with doing scenery because it's just so versatile. You can do so much with it. You can carve it. You can sand it. You can move it around as easily as we're doing here with anything from a trowel to a paintbrush. And it's just got that natural lumpy look that's great for for uh, the ground. I'm gonna come up behind you here. Just want to smooth that out a little bit. All right, I think we're looking pretty good. All right, I'm going to go ahead and fill in this rest of this area right here, and uh, then we'll wrap up. All right, so here's the finished area with the rest of the sculpt mold in. Went ahead and dropped the bridge back in place, and I tell you, when you start doing plaster cloth, even a little bit makes a huge difference. So I went ahead and put the bridges in so you could uh, see exactly what the whole scene is going to look like uh, with everything in place. But... Coming right along, guys. Next time, uh, we'll either look at adding water features or possibly carving and creating piers and abutments out of foam. Um, we'll, uh, we'll just see how this week goes as to what the next episode is. But uh, if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to my channel. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this episode. And uh, look forward to seeing you next time. Stay well, everyone. Have a great week.